Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Winston's Weekly, covering all things property. I'm Manny Anton, your host for today's property chat. Winston, as always, thank you for your time. It's a pleasure. All right, uh, let's get let's start with the US as usual. Um, now it's been an interesting week. Um, uh, a lot of uh, quite a bit of uh, data around, and, and again, um, you know, rates have been swinging around a little bit. When, quite frankly, the you know, uh, int- you know, rates have been going north. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, that's really where it's been heading. But um, the U.S. real estate sector has again seen some uh, some decent swings as well during the week. Um, as a result of that, you know what's going on there on in that inflation and rate front. So most of the data this this week is is basically uh, showing that the U.S. economy remains very robust. Um, you know, we in fact overnight we had some jobless data, for example, mm. that again, you know, was suggesting, hey, you know, things are still looking pretty good yeah. from a U.S. economic perspective. Now, obviously, markets are thinking, well, that's going to make it pretty tough. For the uh, for the Fed, uh, in terms of their interest rate policy, um, and in fact, the Fed chair came out during the week as well and made some comments about you know uh, perhaps having to hold rates at current levels for a little bit longer. What are your thoughts around that? Well, obviously, the data that's come out does suggest and support a much stronger um, U.S. economy than a lot of people would have hoped for. Um, we, we don't want to see a, a, a recession, which is probably off the cards now, given how strong the economy is going. But um, given that it is very strong, it, it does put pressure on the Fed uh, not to cut rates early. Um, so it's really a, a, about the timing issue, and, and, and I think people are getting a little bit um, uh, disappointed with the fact that we haven't seen rate cuts yet, and they're now likely to be pushed out. Yeah. You know. Um, um, the, 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 the bond market is really what is being focused on and the 10 year yields have gone above 4.5% in the US. Um, the, the, they, they are edging closer to the 5% level which is yeah. a bit of a worry. Um, whether they get there or not is another matter. If, if there's some more um, strong uh, economic news coming out, we, we may see that. Um, but that's likely to be a short-term uh, impact rather than, than anything else. And it's a similar situation here in Australia. The data that's come out here, uh, the employment data that, that yeah. came out during the week, does suggest that the economy is still cranking along. And so um, uh, well, the prospects for, for rate cuts in, in Australia as well are being pushed out. Okay. Well, let's, let's move on to the domestic markets. Um, uh, Domestic property. Now, there's been some interesting discussion I've noticed this week uh, about some of the trends we're seeing in the office sector. Um, it's been in a, a little bit in the press. I think there've been some surveys about vacancy rates across the uh, across the office space. Now, a recent analysis on CBD office has shown that there's a growing trend here that sees, well, there's a growing gap in vacancy numbers emerging between grade A and grade B office. Yeah. Um, you know. What's happening there? I mean, you know, what, what's what's driving that? What's what, well, what, how do you, what, yeah. what's the outcome of yeah. that ultimately? Well, given the amount of vacancies that has been around for, for a while, um, tenants now have a bit of a choice as to where, where they want to move to, and um, it sort of helps their, their their bottom line in a way because less people are coming into the office, so they need less space, yeah. but they want to improve the, the facilities and the offerings for for their people. So they're moving up in terms of quality. Mm. They may be paying per square metre the same uh, or or probably a higher rate, but they're actually uh, leasing smaller spaces. So they come out net net flat uh, uh, rather than actually spending more money to to improve their position. And that's something that that the sector, particularly the office um, uh, managers and so on, are, are sort of focusing on offering better quality office space um, even though it might be smaller in terms of needs, but at least that's where the demand is. And uh, conversely, what will happen is that the lesser quality uh, assets are the ones that are going to suffer going forward. What happens to those assets? Well, um, a, a lot of them, um, in the past, they used to be either uh, converted into some o- other use like residential or hotel or so whatever. repurposed. Repurposed. Right. Um, or in some cases, it might be a case of, depending on how old they are, of completely pulling them down and, and rebuilding something new. 
but that's a f fairly risky uh, mm. um, thing to take on at this point in time. But I'm sure as time goes by, some of those things will, will, will eventuate. How would you play that particular thematic, that, that, that movement of A versus B? How would you play that in the listed space? Well, you want to be invested in, in those REITs that do have the quality the assets, grade, yeah. the A grade. Now, realistically, not every building that, 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 that an owner owns is A grade. Mm -hmm. And so they're also working through their portfolios in terms of curating them to, to, to have a higher percentage of the better quality, the, the premium, the A grade buildings, um, and sort of offloading some of the, the, the lesser quality uh, properties if they can. Okay, great. Um, let's move on to uh, M&A, BWP Newmark. What's the latest on, uh, on acceptances on that front? Have they well, got their 90% yet or no, not? No, they haven't got their 90% yet. Um, the last uh, figure I saw, which was uh, yesterday, uh, they're in uh, the, the low 80s, 82, 83 percent. Mm -hmm. So they've still got another 7 percent or so to go to get to the 90. Uh, but they have extended the, the time frame to uh, not this Friday, but the following Friday of next week. Uh, but it's been slow going, which is quite interesting. Um, I know they've, all been, they've been ringing every investor that, that is still out there that yeah. hasn't made up their mind to try and get them to, to sign up. So that, that's, that's, I think that's what the process they're in at the moment. Okay, and uh, looking forward to next week. Uh, anything material that we need to be focused on from a property perspective, or is it? We, we're in that sort of grey area at the moment in terms of either news or, 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 or situations that, that will impact. Uh, so we're left to the vagaries of what happens with the bonds and what happens with, with CPI numbers as they come out. There's, there's no results due, there, there's no updates, no mm -hmm. quarterly updates. Um, we, all that's happened in the past, so it's really a matter of um, working your way through at the moment. Interestingly, um, last month the, the REIT sector was up a strong 9%. Mm. This month, it's, so far, it's down about 8%. Yeah. Um, so, and that's the impact of, of what's happening with, with, with rates and concerns about pushing out the time frame of rate cuts. Yeah, and we've seen that, you know, as I said, mentioned earlier, we've seen some pretty decent swings in US real estate as yeah, well. So. Yeah, uh, w one thing that is, perhaps I should note, is that in the US there was a, a, a report came out that basically said that the demand for industrial um, uh, space has somewhat come off the boil. Mm. Um, now, it, it, it's not, a, a, it hasn't come off a, a hell of a lot, but it, it was enough to, uh, Prologis is the largest uh, listed uh, industrial entity in the US and that got knocked about quite a bit. Mm. Um, and it did have a slight impact on, on Goodman's here, but Goodman's is still sort of powering along on the basis of, of the fact that, you know, they're concentrating now on data centers, which is which yeah. very, very big demand. Um, and they have, uh, you know, a lot of opportunities in that space. All right, well, Winston, thank you for your uh, time and insights today as always. It's a pleasure. Um, and uh, we will be back with another edition of Winston's Weekly after the Anzac Day weekend. So have a great day and have a great weekend.